Can I get a Diet Coke, please? Hey Elm Street brats, Kid Kruger here with my Tuesday vlog. Attention Baptists, Catholics, Protestants, Episcopalians, Mormons, and the like. You're probably not going to like this video because it's all about the Exorcist Anthology, including some other stuff that's coming up. So, my good friend Charlie, hey Charlie, uh, sent me the Exorcist Anthology on Blu-ray, which includes Exorcist, and the director's cut of Exorcist, Exorcist 2, The Heretic, Exorcist 3, and then the two prequels, Exorcist The Beginning, and Exorcist Dominion. Now I'm going to talk about all of these films because I powered through all of them because there was one I hadn't seen and another I hadn't seen in many many years. So first off, going into the original Exorcist, now tell me your opinions on this movie but yes it is considered a classic and I finally got to see it in movie theaters when they did release the director's cut with footage you have never seen before in theaters and I was in my 20s and it still scared the crap out of me. This movie has so many visuals and so many themes running through it that like, it's one of those movies that just like haunts me. It's truly disturbing and it is such a slow burn of a film. Ellen Burstyn is amazing. Linda Blair, what a wicked little 12 year old to make that movie. But um, yeah, and I do not like uh, Pazuzu's face. I put him in the thumbnail because he just scares the fuck out of me, and I thought he should be represented. But anyway, yes, Exorcist. What, okay, here's a backstory. When I was little, I used to want to watch horror movies all the time, but my mother was like, well, we need to watch them first and tell you if you're able to watch them. Because I would see the trailers on TV and on the movie channels and stuff like that, and I was like, please, please, let me watch these movies. She let me watch Dracula with Frank Langella when I was like seven, and that's not a scary movie by any far stretch, but she let me watch it, but she said, you cannot crawl into bed with us, you cannot wake us up, you can't do anything like that, you have to just take it like a grown-up little seven-year-old. And I was like, okay, mommy. And so I watched the movie, loved every minute of it. There was a scene towards the end where he burns up and gets crispy and his face gets all which always weirds me out when faces get all but, yeah, but uh, I was fine, I went to bed, but then in the middle of the night, I shared a room with my big brother, and there was a tree up in front of our, 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 in front of our house, outside the window, and the curtains were shut, and it always made these, like, shadows, but I woke up, and I swore there were bats trying to get into the house. So I got up, casually walked to my mother and father's room, tapped my mother on the shoulder, woke her up, and said, listen, there are vampire bats at the window, so if you wake up in the morning and I'm dead, stick a stake through my heart before you bury me. My mother laughed, of course, because this was just the kind of kid I was, but she respected that and asked me if I wanted to stay, and I said, no, I will gladly go back to bed, that's fine. But if I'm dead, just know. It's your fault. But anyway, so this tradition went on throughout the years and when I was I think probably 11 I saw a trailer for The Exorcist and I had read oh I'd seen the book in the public library and the cover of the book freaked me out it was uh, written by William Peter Blatty um, but um, yeah so I was so transfixed on this movie and I loved the imagery and the music like wake me out so I was like I want to see this movie so bad and my mom was like mm. It's coming on tonight, we're gonna watch it while you're in bed, and I'll let you know if you're allowed to watch it, if you're grown up enough 11 year old to watch this movie, to handle it. So, uh, I went to bed all eagerly anticipating like the night before Christmas, I'm like, I'm gonna get a present, I'm gonna get to see this amazing movie. Got up the next morning, the smell of cinnamon toast filled the air. I came skipping into the kitchen, my mother turned, looked me dead in the eyes and said, no! 
Not until you're 30, and even then, I don't want to know about it. So you know I had to see it. So inevitably, I went to a slumber party, watched it, became terrified, and could not sleep for a week. And she knew what I had done. It was like, I don't know, it was like shameful almost. It was almost like when kids get caught looking at porn. I mean, I wouldn't know anything about that because I didn't see porn until I was much older. Anyway, other story. But yes, so The Exorcist was very much a staple in my growing up in the horror genre, as it were. But yes, I love the original. I love the one with the extra footage, the director's cut, because the spider walk, come on. The spider walk down the stairs, I literally pooped. Like, that was just like, what the? Okay, and this is another thing about me with possession movies, and I, I watch them all the time, but it's stupid because the thing about possession movies that scares me is distorted bodies and, like, twisting and cracking and stuff like that, and they always fucking do that. They always do it. And I'm like, oh, no, this one won't have it. Yeah, they have it. And now Japanese ghosts have it. And now modern-day ghost stories have it. It's, I can't get away from the contortionist reality of the surreality of horror. Anyway, uh, Exorcist 2, The Heretic, I feel like it went a little too... It tried to be too cerebral, maybe? It, I, don't, I don't know. Like, it just did not scare me. It was cool that Linda Blair came back, but, like, at the same time, it was just, like... I don't know. I find a really hard time getting into The Heretic. I was like, okay, all right, okay, all right. It just seemed like it was... Maybe it was... Not that it was taking itself too seriously, because it is a sequel to The Exorcist, because you can't really comedy that shit up, but it was just like... Come on now. Locus. Got it. Grew up in Texas. Don't care. On to part three, though. This is one I hadn't seen in forever. I think I saw it once when I was a kid and I rented on VHS, and I don't really remember a lot about it. I'm glad that I went back and watched it, and I have it now, because I think this is a really underrated sequel. It was directed by William Peter Blatty, who wrote the book and its sequel. It's not... It's not directly like his book he wrote, but it is a great exorcist vision, and the plot is so twisted. Brad Dourif, as a possessed dude, perfection. Like, he... Blah, 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 blah. Great scenes. And, like, his scenes, like, of dialogue, they go on for, like, several minutes at a time, but you just don't care because you're just so engrossed in what he has to say. Um, George C. Scott was in it. He played the detective trying to crack this case. Um, the imagery is disturbing, has one of the best jump scares I've ever seen in my life, and I use jump scare as a positive in this movie because it was out of left field and you're just like, holy shit! You'll know what I'm talking about. You're in the hospital. There's a lot of white. That's all I'm gonna say. If you haven't seen it, rent it. Buy it. Live it. But George C. Scott, apparently, I read that he got nominated for, or he got, he got a worst actor in the Razzies when that came out, which I don't understand. I mean, it's George C. Scott, and I thought he did great, but that's just my opinion. That's neither here nor there. I mean, yes, it is here nor there, because it's my channel. So I don't know what your problem is, Razzies, but it was George C. Scott. He was in Firestarter. He played an Indian. Kind of crazy. But yes, if you haven't seen part three, I think you should definitely check it out. Um, they are coming out with, I just found out, like seven minutes ago, they're coming out with a director's cut, which I guess is going to be more uniform to William Peter Blatty's vision. So I'm anxious to see that one. Um, okay, as for... Okay, I didn't know the full story on this. I saw Exorcist The Beginning, which was a prequel, in theaters. It was kind of a jumbled mess. In my opinion, I, I, a lot of exposition, not a lot. I, I, I don't think it stayed true to the main character's story, necessarily, like to his face, which also ties into why they came out with the Exorcist Dominion, 
which was then shelved because, let me see if I get this right, there was not enough information about Father Karras' faith and what made him become a priest, and then, so they refilmed it with the same cast and changed the plot just a little bit and made a wholly separate film. So there are two prequels. There's the beginning and there's Dominion. And I don't quite get that because, I mean, just neither one of them are very good films. Like, they weren't scary to me. Um, I, I don't know. I, they just didn't feel like exorcist films to me. So, um, I definitely think one and three are the strongest of the anthology, in my opinion. Um, which ties in now to they just started releasing trailers and pictures and stuff. Gina Davis is going to star in Exorcist the series. Now, when I first found out that Fox was making it, I'm like, really? Really? Fox, you're going to make The Exorcist into a TV show? Eh, a little worried there. A little worried. But, but, so far, reviews and news have been very positive. I mean, it's Gina Davis. I love her. I love what she does. The trailer I've seen for it looks really cool and intense. I hear the pilot is amazing, so I can only hope that the entire series is going to be great. I know, I forget which studio made uh, The Omen into a series, but that got nipped in the bud real quick. So I'm hoping this gets at least one full season, and it's a good season. I don't know what they're going to do if, if, if it's successful, if they're going to do a different exorcist story moving forward each season, because that would be interesting. I don't think you can drag out one single exorcism for multiple years. I mean, you could, but then you'd just be the CW. And I'm not talking Supernatural, because everybody knows Supernatural is the shit. I'm talking about, like, One Tree Hill and stuff like that. No judgment. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm really anxious to see The Exorcist television show. And what do you think of The Exorcist films? Do they scare you? Some people think they're scary. Some people don't think they're scary at all. Some people think they saw it too late in life, so they don't get the eerie scariness about it. Um... I personally, even to this day, the imagery in the original Exorcist just weirds me out, and it's great. And it's all worth it for Ellen Burstyn, because she's... She's Ellen Burstyn, okay? That's all we need to say about it. But, um, yeah, let me know what you think about the Exorcist films, because I want to know. And, yeah. So that's my video for today. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe down below if you have not. Follow me on the social medias. I have a Snapchat, I have a Twitter, and I have an Instagram where I do all kinds of weird shenanigans. And um, yeah, so take care. And until next time, just remember, don't microwave pea soup because it's going to come right back up. And that shit is radioactive.